Hello, everyone, and welcome to 180 Degrees of Impact. My name is Matt Scott, and today, I, for the first interview of 2018, I'm very thankful to be joined by Steve Reinemann. Hi, Steve, how are you doing? Great. Good morning to you, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, you know, I, I'm really excited to do this interview with you uh, for a ton of reasons, but I, I think the place I'd love to start, because I especially with you, I would have a hard time doing this. I would love if you could give your introduction to the 180 Degrees of Impact audience and tell us all how you introduce yourself to people. Wow. Well, how I introduce myself to people is, is different based on the circumstances, but I'll just give you a little background on myself. I was uh, 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 born in, uh, in in New York City and grew up in Miami, Florida. Uh, the son of a single mom. Uh, I have a brother and sister, and my mom has always been the hero of my life. Uh, she passed away uh, just a year ago at uh, at age ninety three, and uh, she's been has always been and continues to be the hero of my life. I mean, she dedicated her entire life to her kids. At twenty nine, she was a widow, having never worked never went to college, had three children, and she dedicated her life unconditionally to making our lives the lives that she didn't have. And um, although we didn't have anything materially growing up as uh, kids, we had a rich uh, heritage. And, uh, and, and I think the, the privilege that we had with her is that she uh, introduced us to our faith, and we, we saw it genuinely because she lived it every day. And, and that's the most compelling way people can, can see what really makes uh, other people exist. So uh, she taught me faith. She taught me the, uh, the idea of unconditional acceptance and love. Mm -hmm. And she also was always there to believe that I could do anything that I believed I could do. And that, that confidence from, uh, from your, from your uh, parents that you can do things is uh, is is amazing and frankly matt you know that because yeah. that's exactly uh what the the situation you've grown up in and of course your dad was a, a great friend of mine and and someone who i have had uh, enormous respect for over the years and i can just see in you the traits that um uh, that he had and and frankly uh not to dwell too much on this um having this interview is really special for me because he was your age when we first met and uh or maybe a little older he was just slightly older than you are today when we first met uh and has been uh, was an, in, uh, an inspiration to me uh, in my life and i can remember sitting around in our apartment as we we were in school together at, at ibm and just sitting around at night talking about life and and uh, i learned so much from him in stories that i told uh, over the years uh, to other people. So um, I, I diverted a little bit from my story here, but uh, uh, I, I went to the United States Naval Academy, graduated, served five years in the Marine Corps, uh, got out and, uh, and started uh, at IBM, and that's where I met your dad. Mm -hmm. Went on from IBM and uh, went to graduate school and then entered uh, uh, Marriott, uh, Marriott Corporation, uh, in the restaurant business. They used to be in the restaurant business. Uh, I was involved there for seven years and then moved on to PepsiCo for a 23-year career there, um, which was a, a wonderful experience. And retired uh, from PepsiCo and then became the dean of the business school at Wake Forest uh, University. Did that for eight years. And now my wife and I live in Denver, Colorado. We have uh, four children. Um, and four grandchildren, and two of our children live uh, here in Denver, and two of our grandchildren. So that's my life in a nutshell, and um, I'd be happy to go further anywhere you want to go. I think you, <laughs> I think you and anyone who's watching would completely understand, especially in this case, why it would be so difficult for me to, to introduce you and your uh, because I, I, I don't really think 
you know, I, the reason I do these interviews with 100 Age Piece of Impact is because I really don't think that anyone could do justice like telling your story like you can or like me telling my story like I can and so on and so forth. But I think, you know, one thing that I found really powerful about you especially like preparing for this interview was just looking at other interviews that you've done or other speeches you've given. And I really appreciate how you always uh, give credit to your mother and your upbringing as part of who you are today. Uh, and it's really inspiring because I, I mean, I, I appreciate it. I'm glad that you mentioned my dad and, and gave him so much uh, credit and so, uh, you know, just those kind words because I know that he felt so strongly about the work that you were doing and the person you are. And uh, I could go on about how he would only drink uh, Pepsi in, uh, whenever we would go out, which I thought used to be embarrassing sometimes when, uh, you know, a place might only sell Coke and he wouldn't get the Coke because there's no Pepsi. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I appreciate that because I think it, it speaks to the fact that, you know, uh, our, you know, our, our, you know, parents or guardians or really whoever's raising us is uh, such a big part of who we are. And I definitely see that with my dad, as you were saying, I think I'm, I'm especially curious, like how your values have impacted your work, uh, whether, you know, it, speaking, going all the way back to IBM, but thinking about PepsiCo, thinking about the boards that you're on, how have your values, and I know this is a broad question, but how have they informed uh, how you approach business? Well, I, I believe in uh, that, that purpose, the, the purpose of your life is, is really at the core of everything you do and should be. And uh, we all take different ways of demonstrating um, the, the skills and backgrounds that we have, but that has to be driven out of the core purpose. And going back to you know, early childhood, I was fortunate enough to, to be able to form those through uh, my mother's influence. And um, it was based on a faith um, mm -hmm. that we're here for, um, uh, for a purpose. And that purpose is to, is to serve uh, the God we believe in and the people uh, of, of the earth. And you may demonstrate it in, you know, uh, non-for-profit work and profit work and uh, religious work, but but it is at the essence of what you do and what you believe in. And, and there were a couple of other principles that sort of came out of that, that my mom was an important part of my life, but so were other people who mm -hmm. for reasons, no other reason other than that they, they were called to do it. They had an influence in my life, whether it's my second grade school teacher, uh, my high school principal, the pastor of my church, they all had influence in who I was and they reached out and, and I call it, they sort of helped, level the playing field for me because I didn't have the resources that other people had and they reached out to make it possible for me. I, I went to public high school and in that school, I mean, they made it possible for me to be able to compete. Mm -hmm. And so in PepsiCo or other walks of, uh, of life that I've been involved in, one of my objectives is to, is to help level the playing field for others to be able to achieve all of the skills that they've been given. So that would be um, one of the driving factors in, in the things that, that I've participated in. And also the, the fact that for-profit companies like non-for-profit companies and religious organizations, that, that there's real deep impact that you can have on people's lives. Mm -hmm. and that's what we tried to do at PepsiCo. Um, my successor at PepsiCo, Indra Nui, has uh, come up with um, a, a little phrase that I think really says it all. It's, it's performance with purpose. And that's been, uh, it's been something that I believe has been around PepsiCo a long time, but she actually introduced the, the, the terms. And, and it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and let me give you an example. I mean, in a beverage company, we, we, we use water. So we know a little bit about what, water is, where it comes from, you know, how it's purified, how it's conserved. And so for us to be able to deal with the knowledge we have to bring, uh, say, safe water 
to people around the world who don't have it. There's a, over a billion people a, year, a day who, who don't have access to safe water. And for us to be able to participate in making a difference there, that makes a difference to society. And every company has expertise in certain areas that they can use to, to expose that um, to the public and make life better for others. I guess as a, as a follow-up with, to that, it's really inspiring to see all that work that, uh, that Pepsi and a lot of corporations really do to, uh, I mean, we call it, of course, corporate social responsibility, like do to serve the community and support the community. Um, but I, I guess I'm, I'm curious, you, you mentioned purpose. Where do you get the purpose or where do you get the courage to live your purpose? Yeah, that's really a good question, Matt. And, and um, uh, I guess, you know, I keep going back to it, but I guess it's just been, in you know, instilled in me mm -hmm. uh, from my upbringing. And, and um, you know, the, 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 the idea of, of taking a strong position on something that I believe in is not foreign uh, to me. And I, I think most of us, if not all of us know the right thing to do and the right way for us to, to make an impact. The, the challenge is, is yeah. to constantly actually express that. And um, I would say, you know, sometimes you don't feel like it, but you got to be able to, you know, to, to be able to do it. Right. I think that's, that's the powerful piece. Like there are a lot of uh, people who I've met, who especially in my in my work with Second Muse full time, where they are, and it's often people who aren't in the U.S. Uh, doing work that uh, is somewhat considered uh, disruptive or or radical in some sense, not in a not in a negative sense, but just different from the status quo, and, and thus it takes a lot of pushing for them. Uh, so you mentioned your values really motivating you, but considering speaking to the work that you've done uh, at Wake Forest University, for example, or the opportunities you have to speak with communities, what advice do you give for people to go from having that notion of what the right thing is to actually living the, the right thing and living their values? Well, Matt, I think it starts with really defining that and defining the purpose that you have for your life. And I used to challenge the students to, to, to really give a great deal of thought to, to what it is that is behind who they are and what they do. And mm -hmm. sometimes, in fact, one of the little exercises I challenge people to do is take a weekend off and just go off by yourself and, and start free flow writing as far back in your life as you can just sort of who you are and and capture that in writing and then go back and see if you can see the strings of consistency throughout your life that will help you understand what you believe, what are your skills, what are your key skills, what have you gotten enjoyment in doing and satisfaction, and then mold your life going forward based on that experience. Oh, wow. That's a powerful exercise. And it, it's something that I can't, I don't know if I've uh, personally done that intentionally, but it's, it's happened over time where there were some, uh, I'll give an example. In high school, I went to a school called Seton Hall Prep in, uh, in West Orange, New Jersey. And through one of the activities that I was involved in at one point, we actually wrote like letters to ourselves to, to like, give and mail to ourselves. And I, I actually, so I sent this letter my junior or senior year of high school. I actually didn't open it and read it until maybe a, a few months after I graduated college. So about five years later to the day that I actually wrote that letter and what was really spectacular was seeing how much, uh, I guess my intuition then really played out into what I would, would go on to do and become. So for me, it's a passion around uh, 
social impact and around social entrepreneurship and around this idea of doing good. So tying in with what you're saying about living your values. But, um, you know, I found myself doing that looking back at, uh, at, at my experience oftentimes when realizing that I, that people are asking me about it. So I should really understand my narrative, but it's really true. There is usually some consistent thread in your, in your story. Uh, just, I know in speaking about that activity and the advice you've given to, I think of young people in particular and of students, uh, what have some of the reactions been from those students or, you know, have, have, has anyone had any massive revelations as a result of doing that activity? Oh, I think so. Um, and, and I have to sort of take a little diversion to that question for a second, okay. say that the students who have the capability and the resources to get to the university are in a position to be able to do that. Unfortunately, there are, far more people in the world who for lots of reasons are struggling and don't have the resources to take a weekend off and to actually think about what their life is all about. And to, to those people, um, there's another whole set of challenges, but to the, to those students that had the privilege of being able to, to take the time to educate themselves, if they didn't, I used to challenge them, if they didn't graduate with a clear understanding of their purpose and how they're going to demonstrate that in, in their lives, they missed the, the, probably the most important part of the privilege of that education. Because you can learn all of the skills, particularly in a business school, to be successful, but if you don't passionate about and believe in what you're really doing, then it's probably not going to be successful and you're probably not going to feel satisfaction out of that. Mm -hmm. So the important thing I believe is to really challenge that purpose. And I, I would follow that purpose with to challenge students to develop what are the characteristics that you want to measure yourself against and what, what is it that you admire in other leaders that make a difference and, and make sure that you have that captured for yourself so that you sort of have a template that you hold yourself against and that you help train and develop others against so that they can become fully effective leaders and accomplish the passion and vision and mission that they have uh, uh, been given. Yeah. As a follow-up to that, though, I'd really love to hear you mentioned uh, really thinking about who, what are those qualities that, that you know that i might or that we might admire in in leaders i'd love to know who are some of the the leaders that you admire and what are some of those qualities that come to mind for you well i to make it simple i i've picked four uh words that characterize the four aspects right. that i used um uh, one is character one is commitment one is competency and one is compassion. So those are the four C's. Mm -hmm. And I can sort of unpack those a little bit, but probably the easiest way to do it is to maybe give you some examples of people, to, to your point. Um, in character, I've been fortunate enough to work for, work with, and be friends with people that I have enormous respect for, for the, for the way they conduct their lives, for the, the, the value of doing it the right way. It's sort of, um, I had one of my mentors, uh, Wayne Calloway, who was chairman of PepsiCo before me and mentored me for 10 years. I worked for him. He used to, he used to say, um, results with integrity is what counts. And his life stood for that. And his, the way he um, disciplined himself to, to, to live a life of character um, was an inspiration to me. Um, if you think about um, uh, uh, people that uh, have influenced your life because they live lives that um, are um, uh, have, ha are full of integrity, I, th I think of uh, of uh, John McCain, uh, mm -hmm. who's uh, struggling in, with his health right now, and the impact that his courage has had over the years. Um, mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think of, uh, of President 
John F. Kennedy and the, the impact that his character had on, on the definition of um, success in, in, in our country. Mm-hmm. I think of people like, uh, like uh, Gandhi who, who changed his society because of the belief that they had or Nelson Mandela and, and people whose character drove them to make a difference in life. So mm-hmm. character, you can unpack and talk about integrity. You can talk about honesty. You can talk about, um, you know, grit, but the, the, however it is you want to unpack character, that's one. Mm-hmm. Competency to me has two parts. Competency has sort of an intellectual piece that you can develop and it has an experiential piece uh, and being able to use the, the lessons that you've got in life to, to weave together. And the example I use there uh, is um, uh, Steve Jobs at, at, at Apple, a very brilliant individual, started a company at a young age, failed, the company failed, he had to leave, he goes off, he, he gets experiences, uh, some success, some challenges, and comes back, takes over the company that he um, once lost and and takes it from a market cap of basically zero to mm-hmm. one of the largest market caps in the world in a very short period of time. And his competency is, is unparalleled, in my opinion, because he understands, he understood what the consumer wanted before they even could articulate it. Mm-hmm. And that was deep competency. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the third one is uh, commitment. And that's the whole idea of grit, um, uh, never giving up, having a purpose, having a plan, and figuring out when you have to move back and forth towards achieving that plan, you don't lose sight of the goal. And the example I always use in, in, in this one is, is my mom and the, the fact that financially her resources were limited, but she never let that get in the way of making sure that she was committed to giving her children everything that she thought they needed to be successful. And, and that grit um, was, was something that, um, you know, made the difference. I mean, she just didn't, didn't give up. Um, uh, the, the fourth one is compassion. And that's where uh, I think uh, it, it's critical for, for leaders that I admire to not only um, succeed at their whatever their chosen task is, but to take others with you mm-hmm. and to think about the needs of others and to make a difference in the lives of others. So those are the four that, that I've sort of um, developed over the years. And um, it starts with a purpose. You build on that purpose with with characteristics. Wow, that's it's really inspiring to to think about the. Well, first of all, it's really it's really helpful to have those examples of people who who really live those four characteristics, and like as you got around to commitment and we're really, we're really talking about your mom and her grit, uh, I started to think about my dad and I was thinking about how those qualities also apply in him and which, which is really important to me, not just as, uh, as his son, but even more as someone who was able to learn from him. So like to give an example of, from my own experience of um, when I've really seen the impact recently when I've seen the impact of that, uh, of that commitment, of that compassion, competency, and character, any time I, I go to visit my uh, my well dad's company, which is still running, my sister Megan is is operating it and doing an incredible job. The caregivers are there, and it's it's uh, it's. I think, you know, you mentioned losing your, your mom last year, a year ago, and I'm sure like in different ways you can relate that it's almost surprising to me how much of an impact, like everywhere I look that my, my dad had, uh, which I'm, which I'm sure you can appreciate, um, in knowing him, but also thinking about your mom. Actually, you're a great, you're a great example of that also. So, so many ways to look at it, but just like seeing the caregivers who are reflecting on, I mean, 
the professional interactions and how much that his uh, approach has impacted their lives is is really powerful. And I think it's a powerful reminder of why character, competency, commitment, and compassion are so vital in doing business, but also just in in life and, and leadership. Uh, I would love to know that what are the, I'm thinking of so, social entrepreneurs more, um, you know, in particular, but uh, what are some of the challenges that you found that people have in sticking to those those four C's and to their their purpose. Well, life just doesn't uh, doesn't necessarily um, deal uh, a fair hand to everybody, and mm -hmm. uh, and and even to people who are uh, fortunate enough to have dealt a fair hand. There's always challenges in life, and mm -hmm. I think that the the key for successful people is is to be able to get back up. And that's where that, you know, that commitment comes in. And it's to stay on course, regardless of the body blow that may come uh, to you on a short term or a long term basis, whether it's a sickness, whether it's a financial downturn, whether it's a loss of a job, uh, whether it's the loss of a family member. It's, I mean, we all have our challenges. Anyone who says that, that, that they don't have challenges, uh, is is not being uh, honest because mm -hmm. everybody has them. Yeah. And the key is how do you deal with them? How do you get yourself back up after you've had a body blow? And mm -hmm. you know they can be minor blows that take your breath away, or they can be major blows that knock you down. But the key is what drives you to get back up. And in my life, my experience has been if if you there are two things. One is that purpose that belief that you're here for um, and that you believe in uh, a higher calling. And that's the foundation that allows you to get up. And the mm -hmm. second is a more practical one. And that is what have I done in previous times that I've had body blows and how do I think about, well, I was able to get up when this happened and when that happened, I can do it. Mm -hmm. And, and that whole balance between being driven by purpose and being enforced by example of your own life has been what I've found to be helpful uh, in, in dealing with and staying on course. And then it's surrounding yourself with people who, um, who can help and encourage you and, and have in your life. Um, I used to challenge our students to, to form a board of directors have a board of director, personal board of directors mm -hmm. that will challenge you to live the life you said you want to live. Not to live the life they want you to live, mm -hmm. but to live the life that you said you wanted to live. And, and having that group of people around you that can, can, um, can give you that hard news when you don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, that's really powerful because you could go through a lot and one thing that looking ahead to 2018 uh, I think is especially notable or I should say top of mind for me is a lot of, I know so many people who are looking back at 2017 and everyone has had different experiences but a lot of people look back at the year and let's say we're not the biggest fans of what 2017 had to offer them and you know, for, for better, for worse, I think uh, there's a saying that uh, a setback is just a setup for a comeback, which I think is a, a nice <laughs> tweetable, tweetable phrase that I think is just a good, good reminder and uh, compelling for, for some people. But I think it's true, really, that, uh, you know, 2018 or the year ahead or whatever's in front of us, uh, might be has potential to be a good opportunity and a positive experience uh, to go back to what you're saying about grit and, and uh, getting back up either in spite of what happened to us or because of what happened to us. And 
so I, I, I love that lesson of getting back up because I think that I've always, I've, I've found that I've always had that value of getting back up, not letting uh, things stop me. Like what really, what's my excuse is often what I, what I think to myself. But uh, I love hearing that advice from you. And I think a lot of people will benefit from that. Uh, one thing I'd, I'd love to like ask as a, follow-up is if you have as we start to to wind down uh the interview because i know we could go on forever and ever uh i'm wondering if you have any other wisdom that you think is especially relevant to entrepreneurs to social entrepreneurs and in particular to young people who are working to get something that they're, that they're really passionate about off the ground? Well, Matt, you know, I sort of a follow on, the, that question is sort of a follow on to the comment you just made. Mm -hmm. And that is in my own experience, and this was really not in the not-for-profit uh, wor world, but my, my experience has been the greatest learnings and the greatest successes or the things that I look back on with the most satisfaction were born out of um, failures and and uh, uh, experiences that were uh, that were not easy to deal with. Mm -hmm. and from a, and I look at it in three different ways: from a business perspective, from a personal perspective, and from a cultural perspective. I've had experiences in all three of those areas where the defeats were the basis for the the accomplishments that I feel most satisfied with. And I, we could, we could make a whole talk out of that, but let me just quickly use the business one. Cause it's the easiest. Um, back in the days when I was at pizza hut, um, we, we were moving from going from just a restaurant company to being a, what we call the pizza delivery business. And at that time, Domino's was new on the scene and they were taking all of our growth mm -hmm. and that movement from, from the restaurant to delivery sounds like an easy experience, but it was very difficult. And we had a huge and expensive failure under my leadership that mm -hmm. I was lucky enough not to get fired. I still don't exactly know why I wasn't fired, but it was that failure that was the basis for the turnaround that we were able to pull together to really change the and transform Pizza Hut in those days. And the successes that we had for a decade after that were based on the failure that we had. And it was, it was excruciating. I remember waking up in the morning, many, many mornings, wondering if I was going to get fired because mm -hmm. it was so bad. And, but that was the essence of what drove the, the turnaround for Pizza Hut. So it's that being able to deal with and those challenges. And in social entrepreneurship, heavens knows, that anything worthwhile is not going to be easy. And, and my experience is the first plan is normally not right. And I remember going into Wayne Calloway, my boss, after a few months of huge failures and great financial losses and going in and saying to him before he said to me, I, I went, walked in and I said, you know, our plan is not working. And he said, yeah, you're right. What are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And then that time he said, the objective is right. The plan is wrong. What are you going to do about it? And I thought, wow, what great faith he had in us to be able to turn that around. And the same is often true in new initiatives. Mm -hmm. if the objective is right. The passion is right. But the initial plan may just not work. And don't give up. Figure out how do you rebuild this and and make it really work. If it's really worth it, it's probably not easy. Because if it was easy, somebody else would have already done it. Mm -hmm. and I think in social entrepreneurship, some of the challenges that people take on are just enormously difficult, born out of problems, societal problems that didn't happen overnight. And you can't tr change it overnight. But it's the idea of having the passion, having the commitment to do it, and, and recognizing that the first plan may not be the one that really works. Mm -hmm. and the, the key thing that I, at least at this point, want to pull out of that is that it's not easy, but it is really worth it, especially in social entrepreneurship. And I think that's a, 
that's a lesson that I hope people could could carry with them um, from this interview. If there are many, there are many, but uh, I do want to ask one last question. I think it will be my final question as as I wrap up. Uh, like looking at your life and really the legacy that you want to have and the impact that you you've made, but also that you want to make overall. Um, if your life were a, were a book or documentary, what would that title be and, and why? Well, um, those are, those difficult questions are, are, are not, uh, are not easy to, to articulate, but I think it would be, um, seek and follow. And what I mean by that is my, for decades, um, my daily prayer for myself and for my family is to seek God's will in my life mm. and to follow the direction he gives. So be seek and follow. And, and in our family prayers, that that's a part of every prayer is to seek God's will in, in, in what we do long-term and short-term mm. and have the discipline to follow the direction that he gives. So I guess my title would be, uh, I hopefully, uh, seek and follow. Yeah, that's powerful. And one thing I'll, I'll add is that I really appreciate how uh, straightforward and digestible all of this wisdom that you have is. And I, I almost can't wrap my head around it <laughs> at this point. I'll, I'll definitely have to do some thinking around it. And if anyone's watching it and has thoughts about about this, please let me know. But I'm really thankful that, you know, given all of your experience and experience is that you are able to you know, really teach and report back and help others learn. So it's like to serve as a mentor in that way by providing this really, uh, really powerful, but also straightforward and memorable advice, whether it comes to the four C's, to, to seeking and following. And, and uh, as we kind of wrap up, I would love to know from you, for anyone who's watching, um, if they want to learn more about your work, about anything that you're involved in, uh, or about any resources that you're most fond of, where should the viewers of 180 Degrees of Impact look? Wow. Um, <laughs> that's a great question. I, I, one of the things that I, I, that I enjoy doing at this stage in my life is um, to, to help uh, encourage and support uh, particularly young people who are, who are struggling with the questions you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I guess I would invite them uh, to send me an email and uh, we can have a dialogue. And my email address is pretty easy. It's uh, steve at wfu.edu, steve at wfu.edu. And, and I'd be happy to have a dialogue with uh, people who are seeking to figure out what they want to do with their lives and how they might be best uh, uh, able to make an impact in the world. Amazing. And again, uh, as <laughs> I'm sure that you already receive a ton of emails, but uh, that is, I guess, uh, you know, you sharing that is also, again, very simple and straightforward, um, a good way to get in touch. But even more, just a reminder of how important it is for us all to really have a collaborative attitude and attitude that's really focused on supporting one another and uh, so usually when I when I wrap up the interviews as I'm doing now I mention that if you want to learn more about 108 degrees of impact you can visit www.letscare um, on social media it's at let's you care uh, but the other piece is if you want to get in touch with me it uh, my email address is hello at let's care. I think in 2018, if there's one takeaway for me at this point, it's really just this collaboration, supporting one another as much as possible. Uh, and you see a lot of that in the social 
enterprise space and nonprofit space and, and related areas as it is. But uh, I think it's always really important to have those reminders. And I'm, I'm thankful that you know, I could have you as my first interview of 2018, a very special interview, uh, just to really drive home those, those really important lessons. So uh, thanks again, Steve, for, for being part of this. I really, I can't thank you enough. I don't think I can thank you enough. Well, Matt, it's been a pleasure. And my uh, regards uh, uh, to you and your family, please give your mom a hug for me and, uh, and tell her that, uh, that I miss her and, and uh, hope that she has a great 2018. Oh, absolutely. And I, I'll pass that along. I'll pass that hug along. And for anyone who is watching, uh, as I love to say to wrap up these interviews, until next time, keep impacting. <laughs> Thanks again, Steve. Take care.